Hello and welcome back to our channel. Radiator sizing is one of the hottest topics when getting a heat pump. It can be quite complicated, but today we are breaking it down so you can simply understand what radiators are suitable and why. Radiator sizing is the key factor that affects both the cost of installation and most importantly, the efficiency of your heat pump. The rise in heat pump popularity is fantastic for a greener future, but it has also led to a surge in new installers, which means varying levels of quality and experience. Heat pumps are not a one size fits all technology. Your installer should never quote or start an installation without discussing your radiators, especially in retrofit properties where radiator sizing is absolutely critical. For traditional boilers, radiator sizing has been overlooked for years, often assuming a flow temperature around the 70 degree mark. However, air to water heat pumps work best at lower temperatures and have limited flow temperatures. This means not all radiators will provide optimal results throughout the home. Heat pump powered radiators should stay below 50 degrees or ideally closer to 45 degrees. If you have a radiator that is designed to be at a flow temperature of 70 degrees, it will likely not be suitable at 45 degrees. This is because the temperature that the heat pump outputs to the radiator needs to be far less for efficiency and cost savings. A typical boiler installation generally doesn't have accurately sized radiators due to the boiler having huge amounts of capacity or power. Heat pumps are bespoke for your property, as are the radiators. Every radiator is designed to keep the house heating correctly, cheaply, and at equal rates. Let's quickly cover the types of central heating radiators compatible with heat pumps. Convector radiators, the most common type, have convector fins that increase heat output. The available styles are K1, P+, K2, and K3. There are some other types, but to keep it simple, these are the general types. The first step in determining radiator suitability is during the heat loss survey by your installer. They'll measure your radiators, room sizes, ceiling heights, and scout installation locations. From the given heat loss data, each room will have a given heat loss at an ambient temperature, generally around minus four degrees Celsius. The radiator in this space is then sized to this specific parameter. Everything in heating relates back to what's called delta T. Delta means difference and T means temperature. There's many aspects of delta T around the heating system, but to keep it simple, we'll just focus on the radiators. Delta T in this context is the difference between the water flow temperature in your heating system and the room temperature. For example, if the room's target temperature is 20 degrees and the mean water temperature in the radiator is 70 degrees, the delta T of that radiator is 50 degrees. Most current radiators are designed for delta T 50, but heat pumps work better at lower temperatures like delta T 30 or even lower. Lower is always better for heat pumps in terms of running costs and efficiency. This means we need larger radiators to deliver the same heat output at lower temperatures. The easiest way of thinking about this is physical size. If you have a two meter long radiator, you won't need as high a flow temperature because the surface area emitting the heat is much larger. If you have the same flow temperature but half the size of the radiator, it may not be big enough for the room. Radiator output is also dictated by flow rate. This is the velocity or speed of the water circulating your heating system. A radiator may be able to output one kilowatt of heat, but only if the heat can be delivered to it quickly enough. Pipe sizing to ensure the correct flow rates are met is an absolute must for heat pump installation. Microbore pipe work around eight millimeters to 10 millimeters is generally not suitable and will need to be changed. Now for our bonus tip, radiator valves. These allow you to control the temperatures in individual rooms by controlling the flow into your radiators. This degree of flow directly correlates with the level of heat output from that radiator. There are manual and thermostatic valves with thermostatic ones offering precise control and number dials. Thermostatic valves operate by reading the room temperature. As it gets closer to the desired temperature, a wax inside the valve expands and closes the valve, stopping the flow of water. Modern radiator valves all use a wax, but some, such as the Drayton TRV4, use a liquid. This allows for more accurate temperature control of the radiator. By adjusting these valves, you can create your ideal environment throughout the home. To summarize, when discussing radiators for your heat pump and getting the lowest possible running costs, you need your radiators to run around 45 degrees flow temperature. To be competitive with natural gas running costs, this is essential. Secondly, the pipe work going to the radiators all needs to be 50 millimeters as a guide. It may be in certain circumstances that 10 millimeters is suitable, but this is unlikely. 
Thirdly, ensure you've had a room by room heat loss done before selecting your radiators. Our company will always do this for you and work with you if you want a different radiator style. Finally, ask questions. Your installer should know what Delta T is and why it's important. It is essential they understand it fully. Without this information at hand, they are simply guessing. I hope this video helps you understand the importance of radiator sizing in your heat pump installation. With the right setup, heat pumps are incredibly efficient. Please remember, this video serves as a guide and informational resource. It's essential to consult with a professional before making any upgrades to your radiator system. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave any questions in the comments below. We'll see you next time.